The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. It is important to know that in these last days we are not to be ignorant of what Satan's doing in our world so that we don't fall prey into his system. Now, the one person that the Lord has mightily used during the golden age of Laodicean apostasy, one of them, the two golden pillars, is Jack Chick. The Lord has mightily used him. In my opinion, I believe Jack Chick and Peter S. Ruckman were the two golden pillars that the Lord has used to save Laodicean apostasy. So now that they're gone, we're now relying on the silver pillars now, and there's a new generation coming up. There's a new generation coming up. The silver pillars are getting older now. So I want to respect and honor them and drag them to the blood as much as I can because they don't last forever. They don't last forever. But anyways, Jack Chick, he's long dead and gone, but his Chick tracks have led literally thousands to the Lord Jesus Christ, if not hundreds of thousands. Now, there's a report that's going on in Auckland, New Zealand, which is no surprise right there. It has to be at that area. But in Auckland, New Zealand is one of the worst places in the area of New Zealand where they are more intolerant toward Christianity, yep. where Islam is growing and where other religions are coming in. So in Auckland, New Zealand, they got mad at the Chick Tracks because there's some believer out there who left out a Chick Track at some Muslim person's home. And you know what's, you know what's funny is that uh, the Muslim person did not want to be identified. Why is that? Why is that? See these people? They're scared. So they resort to the government and the power of the news media to defend them. Whereas Bible-believing Christians who do not have the power of the news media or the government, we boldly stand up front and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. These people see they're sensitive and they're scared and they're a little whiny, but then Bible-believing Christians, we're the ones that go more upfront and bold. Now, here's the report that was given. This was found at the article by Katie Bradford, May 11th, 2019. Police investigating after anti-Islam leaflets dropped in Auckland. Now, this was so messed up, okay? A Sri Lankan woman living in Mount Roskill who didn't want to be identified told One News she saw someone leaving the leaflet in her letterbox. She was so concerned about the material, she took it to police. Oh, tss, tss, tss. Do we, did I see one of my members calling 911 if they see some kind of uh, anti-Christian material? Oh my goodness. Oh, tush, tush, tush. Mm -hmm. So she said this, quote, I think they are taking it serious. They came immediately. Oh, wow. You know, we should start doing that. We should all start doing that. I mean, isn't this a tolerant, tolerant area that we live in, San Francisco Bay Area? We should start whining. We should all start sending out letters to the cop stations and all that. We should start whining, too, about our faith being persecuted. Someone harassed us during street preaching. We should start doing that, too. My goodness. Now, look what the police did. This is so, this is ridiculous. Police have taken fingerprints and have canvassed the neighborhood to try and identify who delivered the material. Man, we just pass out chick tracks. Oh, hi, here's a free little comic for you. And then they're just going to pounce on you and arrest you. We're going to take your fingerprint and, oh, grow up. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then you see at Sri Lanka what kind of chaos is going on against people who take the name of, uh, who call themselves Christian or Christian churches. Oh, my goodness. And then, you know, with us Christians who don't do this kind of stuff, who pass out trick tracks, you pounce on us? Mm -hmm. yeah, come on. Come on. Shouldn't we get fair treatment yeah. the as the people in Sri Lanka? Shouldn't we get that kind of fair treatment? Mm -hmm. Anyways, the pamphlet appears to originate from American evangelical Christian Jack Chick, who was known for his anti-Islam, anti-Judaism, anti-Catholic cartoons. The New Zealand Muslim Association president, Iklak, Kashkari says he's pleased, he's pleased the police are taking it so seriously. 
Quote, it's quite a significant change from the past. When I've reported that messages and emails that are coming through, they've said they are just psychological issues. We have been encouraging people to report because we've had the silent majority not speaking for some time. So we're encouraging New Zealand and the community to discuss these things, he said. <laughs> Police are urging, uh, listen to this, okay? This gets really good. Police are urging anyone with similar concerns to contact them and say they are taking the matter seriously. Oh, tus tus tus. Mm. Oh my goodness, these people, wicked, oh my goodness. Let's, let's start keeping track now of, let's start keeping track now of all the things that we watch on Comedy Central shows where they mock Christianity, where they criticize Christian beliefs, and let's start taking issue with that and complain, shall we? Tsk, 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 man. What a bunch of wicked... Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Not a surprise. Verse 1. For yourselves, brethren, know that our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. Amen. Amen. That's what the government, the news media, that's what this wicked world does. Yep. When you try to deliver the gospel, they shamefully entreat you. What, what do we do? We just gave a harmless little cartoon comic book. Voicing our opinion. I thought that uh, we're supposed to live in a country where we voice out. We're supposed to speak out and voice our own opinion and issues. What happened to that? You mean that we can't share a disagreement with politics, with religion? I thought we're supposed to do that so we're supposed to be more open-minded. I thought we're supposed to be tolerant of differing opinions. What happened? It became intolerant. Bunch of tolerant people, so-called tolerant people. No, they're the biggest intolerant bunch. In other words, you must tolerate what they tolerate. And you must be intolerant what they're intolerant about. Keep reading. As ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Yeah, no kidding. So what happened? It's very, what happened was Paul the Apostle was preaching the gospel at Philippi, but they were imprisoned, they were shamefully entreated and for preaching the gospel. There's only, one, uh, there's only a few people that I can think about who actually stood out against the Muslim community and went through the same process. That's Nabil Qureshi. Nabil Qureshi and then Acts 17 Apologetics, that YouTube channel. So those people, what they did was they had a heart to witness to Muslims. And what happened after that? The news media and the government pounced on them. And like Paul the Apostle at Philippi, they imprisoned them. But you know what? They had it all video recorded. Yep. So because Qureshi and those guys had it recorded, what did the jury member did when they watched the video recording? They found him not guilty. And guess what? The government had to issue a public apology yeah. in their sight. Just like Paul the Apostle saying to the government leaders, you got to apologize how we were shamefully entreated. He was the only one that got away with it. He was the only one. What's very interesting, though, is that he died very young. So I don't know if there might be a conspiracy behind that. Personally, to me, I feel like that's, he had too much publicity and power to get away with it. So you can't get, they're, they're not going to, New World Order is not going to tolerate that. But anyway, uh, I have no proof. That's just guesswork. It's just extremely interesting, though. But that person, okay, here's the thing, is that he may not be King James only Bible believer, but here's the thing, is that he's a saved brother in Christ who has a heart for Muslims and want to win them to Jesus Christ. And every Bible-believing Christian can learn that lesson. We have Bible-believing missionaries in Muslim countries who are witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ, whom I cannot pronounce their names. And then we got Bible-believing Christians in Muslim areas who reach out to us, but then I cannot uh, publicly reach out to them. So you got to realize this, is that there are Christians out there, Bible believers out there, who should stand in the gap and have a care for souls out there. Now, uh, you tell me, you tell me if this is hate speech to you from Chick Publications concerning the Muslim people. You know what he said about witnessing to the Muslim people? He never said that when witnessing to Muslim people, that we should all pounce on them that we should all get mad and sensitive and call the cops on them. You know what he said? He gave this report 
This is from Chick Publications. Tell me if this is hate speech. You tell me if this is hate speech, you bunch of sensitive li libtards. You, oh my goodness. Anyways, so here's a person. I'm not going to mention his name, okay? But this person, quote, passed out uh, 1,600 copies of Is Allah Like You into the hands of Muslims attending the festival. A section of downtown Dearborn, this is the heart of the Muslim area right there, was roped off and security was tightly controlled, making it very difficult to witness. He used... He was wearing a t-shirt with, quote, I love Muslims on the front and John chapter 9, verse 35 through 38 on the back. When approaching someone, he would smile warmly and say, uh, As-salamu alaykum, which means peace be upon you in Arabic. He was able to hand out tracts about 30 concession stands before security stopped him. He moved to another area, but soon the police arrived and told him he would have to go outside the perimeter if he wished to distribute literature. Rather than fight for his rights of free speech on a public street, he complied and still was able to continue reaching hundreds of Muslims. The Christians who, uh, let's see right here, blah, blah, blah. Only a few people turn him down, and less than a dozen tracks were thrown on the ground. Can you imagine that? Less than a dozen tracks were thrown on the ground. By wearing the I Love Muslims t-shirt and greeting them with peace be upon you in Arabic, he, was usually well, he usually was welcomed long enough to get a track into their hands. Quote, most Christians have a fear of witnessing to Muslim, he says, but they are just another kind of lost souls. Yeah. When I see a group of young men coming toward me, I walk directly toward them with a smile, raise my voice and say, Asala, uh, As -as <laughs> okay, whatever, I'm so sorry. I am so bad at uh, pronouncing different people's languages in foreign languages. You'll see that quite often. <laughs> but anyway, usually they will smile and they see my t-shirt and hear the greeting. I, gr I give each member in the group a track and say, here is one for each of you so you won't fight for over them. So he made sure every one of them got it. Using this good humor, he was rarely turned down. He is ready, he is ready to discuss with them should they wish, but always with the same attitude. If they ask about the track before they read it, he will say something like, it's our love letter to you. If they ask if he is a Muslim, he may reply, no but I love Muslims, I would be willing to take a bullet for you. That's good. From Chick Publications. Yeah. Hate speech, remember that. He's a hateful old bitter man. What a... You bunch of sensitive, wicked people. You just want us to gratify you. We, you just want us to agree everything you want. You just... Oh my goodness, man. He's a bunch of wicked people. You got to realize this, is that... What is wrong with having a love for lost souls who are in danger of burning in hell for all of eternity, and we want to free them from the chains of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ? And if you disagree with that, then we should have a proper discussion and dialogue concerning that. It's not a case of let's arrest people and accuse them for hate speech. People who do that seems to be the hate mongers to me. Yes, right. And they're the ones who want to cram their religion down our throats. Yeah. What kind of wicked people? Now, for you people, you should probably buy this book. It's called You Don't Know Jack. It's Jack Chick's autobiography. Jack Chick's autobiography. But this book, if you would buy this book, then it would probably make you know what kind of a man he was. And you'll see that he's not a hate monger. He was actually a very shy, timid person, but he had a very soft heart and care for lost souls. He used, to be, he used to be a person who was a liberal joining Hollywood. He was going to join up Hollywood, actor, produce, direct, draw stuff, etc. He gave that up for Jesus Christ. And it was around that time that God used another man named Peter Ruckman. And because of that, those two who became not well known and unpopular they gave it up all because they had a bigger care. Lost souls out there giving them Bible-believing truth. Arrest them for hate speech. 
I'm so glad that the Lord took them both home before it gotten worse. I'm so glad. It's up to us now to carry the love of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world.